Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2015 release Tremors 5 Bloodlines. And yes, we're trucking through these Tremors films. And after this, I will be doing the sixth one. And then I actually just found out that all the episodes for the TV show of Tremors are available on YouTube. So after that sixth one, there will be a review for the Tremors TV show. So let's get into Tremors 5 Bloodlines. Now, I do think this is a good rebound from Tremors 4, uh, The Legend Begins, because that one was a real stinker, in my opinion, the worst of the entire series. So Tremors 5 was a nice rebound, in my opinion, and I'll obviously talk about why. Uh, I watched this on Netflix, by the way. When I'm watching these, they're all available on Netflix, minus the TV show, like I was talking about. So this one was directed by Don Michael Paul, who also directed Kindergarten Cop 2, Tremors 6, the Scorpion King Book of Souls. Those are the movies that he's done. This one was written by William Truesmith, M.A. Deuce, C.J. Streber, and John Welpley. Now, John Welpley had been involved in the scripts for Tremors 3, and then he also stayed on for Tremors 6. Um, now, this is the first time that, uh, that this was not involved with Brent Maddock. And S.S. Wilson, those guys have, had been involved with the scripts to some degree and the films in general from the first one all the way through the fourth one. And so I was a little bit like, eh, I don't know what it's going to be like when they're injecting this new blood into writing and directing. Well, it paid off. Uh, I, I guess it kind of just reached that point when they got to number four where they're kind of getting, you know, out of ideas. The, the Maybe the creative drive just wasn't there. Sometimes you just need... A new set of eyes and, and, and a new set of brains to kind of get something going. And this film kind of really highlights that. Uh, it's a PG-13 rating, like most of them are PG-13. Uh, this, uh, Yeah, so like I said, this was the first break that uh, the studio did, Universal, from Brent Maddock and S.S. Wilson. And by the way, they those two together go under uh, Stampede Entertainment. That's the company they have together. Uh, this film actually had pretty mixed reviews, but from the fan side of things, people who were fans of the franchise, for the most part, were positive about this film. Now, I agree with that. That makes sense, especially after seeing number four. You would feel very positive about this film. Uh, so this actually made $2.2 million in video sales, because this is yet another one of those kind of direct-to-video ordeals. Um Everything after the first one for Tremors was direct-to-video, so... Uh, I like how they start this film with a very fast-paced, exciting reality show that Bert's kind of creating himself, and how they explain everything behind the Graboids that you kind of need to know. Now, this way, it basically sets it up so you don't have to have seen one through four. You can just go into five and watch it um, and pretty much know what's going on. Now, all the references aren't going to be there. You're not going to be super familiar with with Burt Gummer and anything, but how they start it out makes it so that people can just come into it fresh, not knowing anything and still enjoy the film. So I thought that was cool, but it's also like a nice refresh because this film was done, what, like 11 years after number four was done. No, actually that wasn't it. This one was done. I have the notes on four. Okay. Yeah, actually I was right. This was done 11 years after the fourth film, so some people kind of might need that refresher to say, oh, okay, now this is this is where we're starting off. This is everything we know about the Graboids at this point. But you soon realize in the film that kind of forget a lot of what you know about the Graboids because they've evolved. And it's, it's this interesting thing where they inject into it because it's a different environment, because this is not the United States uh, or Mexico. It's a situation where they've evolved, they've changed because it's a totally different environment, and that actually happens with creatures, you know, with animals in general. It's a different, it's like a subspecies of the Graboid in a sense. And I, I like that they do that, especially because it, it keeps with all the other films in the franchise where they're always introducing something new. And they're doing that to keep things fresh. And I think they consistently do that. They did at least in number four. But I think they did a really good job with it in number five. And you really needed that because if you're going to try and kind of revive Tremors, you need to get people excited about it and you need to introduce new stuff. And in addition to just like introducing new things, I think the creatures, the new creatures look good. There's still a lot of, <clears throat> you know, what you have seen in the previous films from those creatures, but 
they're updated, they're gnarlier looking, they're more dangerous looking. They look good. So I think they did a good job with that stuff. When the guy is down in the cave in the beginning, the shots actually look really good in there. Like when he's down in the cave and it's very dark, but then how the sunlight's coming in, that's a really nice shot. Um, and overall, I will say that this film is directed quite well. Uh, the cinematography looks really good. Uh, the music, for the most part, the music uh, matches the scenes really well. There are moments where it's like very light and fun and funny. And then there are moments where it's very you know, serious and action-based, and it mirrors what's going on very well. So the soundtrack was done quite well. The acting, for the most part, is very solid. There isn't any, like, bad acting in this, I would say. Um, and obviously the best acting comes from Michael Gross as Burt Gummer because, you know, he's been doing this. This is his fifth film being that character. And, you know, he's a seasoned actor. Um, I could do without the excessive dirt biking in the beginning of this film. There's really no need for it. Like, I understand that it's kind of like setting the tone a little bit for fun and everything. They just kind of go too long with it. And there are a few scenes in this film where they just go a little bit too long with what they're doing, where you're just like, okay, we got it. We can, you know, move on. It's like the director was just, you know, having a little too much fun. The fact the fact that Bert is trying to sell his survivalist cactus juice marinade is actually pretty funny. Um, and I also think it's kind of funny because in the beginning, he kills this snake, and then he eats it with his marinade. And then at the end, they kill the final graboid, and then they eat it down in South Africa. So it kind of, you know, as it starts, is the same way that, it, that the film basically ends. And I kind of like how it comes full circle like that. Just like the graboid life cycle which actually comes to an end at the end of this film. Uh, Jamie Kennedy actually does a solid job in this film as Travis, who we eventually learn is Bert's son, which um, I was like, uh, when, when you finally learn that in the film, I was like, oh, I wonder if they're going to basically like phase Bert out at this point and be like, now he, Travis is the new Bert and he's going to take over and hold the mantle. But I looked ahead and based off the casting list for the sixth film, I think it's called Cold Day in Hell. Um, Bert and Travis are in it. So hopefully they're working together and it's not just like a passing of the torch in the beginning of the film. But we'll see. We'll find out about that. Um, when the guy from South Africa shows up, um, who's saying he's from like the Wildlife Preserve uh, Organization or whatever that is, it actually felt a lot to me like the second film, uh, Tremors 2 Aftershocks where, you know, Earl's down on his luck and he needs some more money because he's got his crappy ostrich farm. And this person from Mexico, the Mexican government shows up and recruits him to go make some money killing graboids. It felt very much the same. It was very much mirroring uh, Tremors 2. And um, that was fine because I think this was, overall, this felt a lot like Tremors 2. And that's a good thing because I thought Tremors 2 was actually a pretty good sequel to the first film. You know, it's never going to be as good, but, you know. You know this three-day weapons quarantine is going to be a problem. Bert needs his guns and not someone else's guns. When they first get to South Africa, and he's like, where's all my stuff? Where are all my guns? And they're like, oh, we have this three-day quarantine thing. As soon as they pointed that out, I was like, this is going to be a problem big time, especially for Bert, because he's very particular about his guns. Not only that, but you, you need a certain level of firearm and firepower to take on the Graboids, and obviously... Bert knows that. He's learned that over the years. He's a seasoned hunter. There's a great quote in this that I really liked. If you've got ass blasters, you've got graboids. Which, which they were just like, oh no, we just have ass blasters here in South Africa. And Bert's like, no, if you've got ass blasters, you've got graboids. I kind of laughed when that quote was said. It was pretty funny. And that's, that's one of the things that this speaks to, is that the script was pretty solid. It was a decent script. The dialogue was good. It felt realistic. The characters were actually pretty cool. And that's another thing that I had written down that I was eventually going to get to. I'll just say it now. Um, I like the introduction of all these new characters and how it's kind of like everyone's joining in the fight. It kind of goes back to the feeling that you get from the first film and the third film and the fourth film where you get, um, you know, the town of perfection coming together and fighting as a group. You know, you that's how they were able to kind of create that exact same feeling with this film. And I like that. And the characters were decent. Like, there weren't any characters where I was like, this is a dumb character. They were all cool. I was down with it. 
I wrote down, does there always need to be some sort of love interest? I get really tired of seeing this in films, especially films like Tremors, where it's just all about having fun. But after that was introduced, they really backed off of it, which I was very happy about. And the way they end it, I was like, oh, no, I hope in the end they're not just like, Travis gets the girl. Um, he didn't. So they kind of backed off of it. And I think that was a cool kind of red herring of, oh, here's the love interest. And then they kind of like let it fizzle out, which... I was happy about that because it's such a cliche piece of crap thing that people do in film. The death scene of the couple in the outside shower is drawn out. It's way too drawn out, but in addition to that, it's way over dramatized. So this is just another moment of one of those kind of like dirt biking type scenes that just, it's too much. That should have been cut down. It was also over the top. There are a lot of out of your element cultural differences moments in this film. Uh, I, f I feel like they didn't need to do that many of them. They did a lot of them where it's just like, oh, look, Americans in South Africa, they're not familiar with the culture. Like, you need that to a degree, but I felt like they kind of overdid it a little bit in the film. Um, they're there to do a job. Like, you don't need to focus that much on it. It's good to see a new creature, and it looks good, and it looks menacing. Uh, but it's not just the one creature, like that kind of, the one, the new ass blaster that actually kind of looks like it's a, it's a, um, a mesh, a, like a mashup of Graboid ass blaster and Shrieker all at the same time. That looked really good, especially when it first showed up at night. Um, and then you see it during the daylight and it still looks good. And that's another thing, like the, the CG for this actually is solid. Um, so it doesn't detract from the film, which is nice. But the Graboids upgrade was really cool, especially the fact that like those tongues, could detach and basically became snakes that's a cool element which by the way i felt like when they opened their mouths it kind of looked like a mix between the the um face huggers from alien and the mouth of the predator so i thought that was kind of cool there are some things in this film that were like borrowed from other films i think the nighttime action when the ass blaster first shows up is pretty good. It was really good. That was a really nice way to kind of jump you into the real action and set things into motion where you're like, all right, Bert, suit up. We're, we're going to kick some ass. Let's go. I really like that moment. It was great when Andrea got killed when the ass blaster fell on him. You know, Bert had shot it. He had exploded. And the guy just literally said, you can't kill me. I'm South African. And then the flaming body falls on him. I laughed at that. I thought that was a funny moment. And that goes back to, it's good script writing. The double cross that happens in this film when the guy is you know, has Bert at gunpoint eventually and he's like, give me the egg and he's going to sell this egg on the black market apparently. That's actually the feeling that I got from the second movie. I thought that's what was going to go on because when the Mexican, uh, the guy from the Mexican government showed up, it seemed a little too odd, especially when they were like, we need one taken alive. And I was like, oh, there's something else going on here, but nothing ever came of that. So they did the same thing in this one, but something did come of that. So it was really interesting that like, it felt the same to me and the road I thought they were going to go down for the second one, they actually went down for the fifth one. So I like that aspect of it. Also, it felt very much like Jurassic Park in that moment because that paired up with the kitchen scene um, felt very Jurassic Park. You know, uh, that guy stealing the egg and trying to get away and then getting killed by the creature that he's stealing the egg of was very much like Jurassic Park. But then there was also, when that's going on, the moment where uh, the guy and the girl are trying to stay alive in the kitchen, that big kitchen, and like you see through the little window in the kitchen door, like the shadow, very much like the velociraptors kind of looking in, um, and then the action that plays out inside is kind of reminiscent of Jurassic Park. So I think they kind of borrowed a little bit from that. Uh, the montage of Bert in the cage was actually pretty funny, especially his plea that he was making on camera to Heather saying, take care, care of the HK, give it a good home. And then saying something like, I kind of miss you too. Um, that was funny. Like he, you could tell that Michael Gross was really playing with the character at that point and doing a good job. It, it was funny. It was a nice light moment. And then like dousing himself in urine and then the, t the lion showing up and peeing on him. It was funny. Um, Bert having to rethink what he knows about the creatures is actually a good thing. It creates a situation where the audience gets something new and the audience feels once again, like they're kind of learning along with Bert. 
And, um, you know, at this point, the audience is very, very attached to Burt Gummer. Like, that's who you want to see if you're a Tremors fan in these films. Um, so when you can learn along with Burt, it's fun. I like it. It's a great-looking scene when the Graboid jumps out of the ground and swallows the guy who was in the chopper. The guy who's basically the South African version of Burt Gummer, the chopper pilot. When that Graboid jumped out and is coming at him, like, that shot of seeing the mouth from behind the guy and then it, like, swallows him, it looked really good. It was a super... Let me fix this light. It was a super good moment, and, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, and then, and then when he eventually shows back up because he made it, uh, it, it's even better because this is a nice, funny moment. You assume the guy's dead. He shows up. He's just like covered in graboid guts. And then he and, um, Bert have this really funny exchange where he, you know, talks about how he got out and he's just like, he's like, been there, buddy. <laughs> I laughed at that too. It was a good moment. And then that's the moment where you really, really realize that is the South African Bert Gummer basically. Good characters. When, um, I like the inclusion of so many new characters. I already talked about that, kind of joining the fight, making it feel like the town again, basically. And then when you find out what bloodlines means in this, not only is it the bloodline of Burt Gummer because Travis is his son, but it's the bloodline of the Graboids and how they're trying to stay alive because of all these eggs. They're trying to protect the eggs. And then the movie becomes Bloodline versus Bloodline, which is why it's plural, Bloodlines. It's Burt Gummer and his Bloodline versus the Graboid and its Bloodline. Who wins in the end? Obviously, the Gummers do, because the Gummers always win. You're not a true Tremors fan if you don't know that. The final Graboid explosion at the end is satisfying with all the orange goo just flying. I know I've said it in other reviews that it is the most satisfying to me when you start seeing the orange goo guts flying all over the place. Those are the best moments. Very, very joyful for me to watch. I love it. Uh, yeah, and then the last thing I just want to say is I feel like this film injected... was. This film was injected with a whole lot of fun. And that's one of the big things that was really missing from Tremors 4. Um, so, like I said in the beginning, this was a really good rebound from Tremors 4. Tremors 4, obviously at this point, the worst of all those films. And it's it was kind of like a recharge for my wife and I to see that Tremors 5 really bounced back. Because after Tremors 4, she was like, Ugh, I don't know. She was feeling down about it. And not too uh, optimistic about Tremors 5, but... It did pretty well. So I think this one's actually on par with the second one, in my opinion. So I think I'm going to give it the exact same rating as I gave uh, Tremors 2 Aftershocks. So I'm going to give Tremors 5 Bloodlines with a possibility of five stars, half stars in play. I'm giving it a three-star rating. This is actually pretty solid, and I think that you know anyone who's into Tremors would enjoy it. Even some people who aren't into Tremors. So, um, yeah, hopefully everyone enjoyed this review. Let's talk down in the comments about Tremors, especially if you're a fan, and especially if you have differing opinions than me, because I like, like hearing that. Uh, do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button. That's your best way to repay me for all the time I put into these. You know, I'm not making money or anything, so uh, I'm just kind of doing this for the love of the horror community. So to keep encouraging me, you know, hit that subscribe. If you And if you've already subscribed, hit the thumbs up just to let me know you're still watching. Uh, and also, if you want to know when my new videos go up or when I'm doing live streams, because I am doing those, make sure you hit the little notification bell when you subscribe, and then you'll get notifications when those things happen. But thanks anyways for checking this out, and until next time, keep it brutal.